Yeah, I root against them in every phase of life. Okay. Yes. It's good to know. Yeah. I appreciate a grudge being <laughs> No held. problem. Good it's going to be hell. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? That's right. It's Chris Sims. It's Chris Sims unbuttoned. That guy you see next to me with the cool jacket and the gray hair. Yes, that's Pauly Burmeister. That's right. I'm calling him out on his gray hair to start <laughs> off. He's like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, good. Good to see you this week. I'm getting grays too, so don't worry. For real? Yeah, definitely. I don't see it. The blondes are the blonde helps me. It, it saves I gonna, it. I was gonna say, is it the blonde that blends in, or are you? Are and you the shaved hair too. Yeah, no, yeah. I would I would never tinker. I'm not yeah, a tinker. I'm gonna go gray or silver fox and just enjoy the ride. I, w- I will welcome you to the club as soon as it starts. Cool, showing. cool. Yeah, I, I just I don't know. I just I have no interest in dyeing my hair you. or faking who I am and there just it don't is. give a shit. Yeah, you know, I don't. <laughs> I find I can always tell on the air, like sometimes you can really see the dye and the yeah, color. I'm like, that's definitely. just not, I, I, I know what they're trying to do, yeah, but right. stay gray. I am, I'm, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. That's, what I, that's how I look at it. Oh, natural is what I look at. Yes. I think it's fitting that we're talking running backs today because it, it's like a November day here yeah, in right. early April here mm-hmm. in the Northeast. Because like if, if we were playing ball today, you would need a good running game. Look at it, it's running, yeah, cold, it's gray, right. gross outside. Yep. RB's in the draft. RB's in the draft. Got, it's phenomenal class. I think that's where you start off, at least for me. I think since I've been on this side of the business, I don't think I've seen this much quality depth at the running back position since I've been doing this for, let's say, the last seven or eight years now. Works so, well since like most teams want to get a guy mid to late rounds anyway. You're, I mean, you're, m- mid to late rounds works well that way. You're right, exactly. And then I think you got a splash of guys that you can throw in the conversation for you know late first round, second round, third round kind of guys. But yes, as we know here in recent history, I think people have been, you know, they're tentative to draft the running back in the top 10 i understand that you know leonard fournette saquon barkley even ezekiel elliott for as good as he was for that three or four year period you go hey do we really want to put a top five pick at that right, position right so there is that and then you look at it and you go you know who are the teams with the nfl leading rushers right now oh derrick henry second round pick oh the vikings second round pick dalvin cook you know alvin Kamara, what fourth round pick third round pick i can't remember exactly yeah nick chubb Guess what? Second round pick. Top, Jonathan yeah. Taylor. Yes. yes second yes. round pick. Top right? three rushers in the NFL this right. year. Taylor, Chubb, Mixon. What do they have in common? Second round Second picks. round. Mixon, too. There you go. You right, look at so. the top five rushing offenses in the NFL. Not one. Not one of those teams has a first round running back yeah. from the recent few years running for them. Right. No. Uh, no. And I think you'll conti- continue to see this. I, I think this formula go on here. You know, every now and then I think we might see a guy. Again, I'm not going to fault the Giants for drafting Saquon Barkley. You know, maybe two was a little high, but at least drafting him high. There were some things when you turn on the film, they just go, it's freaky. There's, right? there's, there's nobody in the NFL that can do that, let alone college. So, you know, and, and, and we talk, I talk to players, you know, at the Super Bowl this year and, and even, even other running backs when I was there. You know, Saquon Barkley's name still comes up as like one of the freakiest guys I ever played or one of the freakiest people I've ever seen in person in my life. So there is that aspect and they are still big difference makers on the football team. There's no doubt, but you can find a lot of sizes and shapes and flavors and colors, and everybody's run scheme is a little different and how they see things too. You know, there's there's okay, there's the the team that pulls guards and wants their running back to kind of slow play it and read the blocks and then hit it, and then there's teams like the 49ers. They say just stretch it out wide a little bit, and when you see a hole, we don't want one more move. We just want you to put your foot in the ground and run straight as fast as you can, and so. Be because of that, you're going to have variance as far as what teams value at mm. the position and what they like for their team. Look, you look at the teams that really build their offense around running the ball. A couple come to mind. Tennessee, well, Derrick Henry special. He wasn't a first-round pick. No. You mentioned San Francisco. They would like to run it in a unique way more than other teams. They've got a sixth-rounder and a freaky wide receiver leading the way in their running game. Exactly. So just, this whole conversation is so fascinating this time of year right. about – is the league devaluing the running back position for first round picks or are they just doing doing things differently in the running game as a supplement to the passing game where they're like, okay, do we really need to use that asset on that position to find the success that we want to have? I, I, th- I, you know, I, think, I think you're saying a lot of good things there. And then, and then too, within that, it's a passing league right now. You know, I think of some of the teams that you just mentioned there, like, you know, the the Titans and the 49ers and even the Patriots who are, you know, a top 
eight rushing team in football. You know, they're a little bit of the creed too of like, yeah, you know, it's well, the NFL is so worried about stopping the pass, stopping the pass. Stop, we're going to kind of take a left-hand turn here and go, let's see if they know how to stop the run. Right. You know, we've talked about this before too. Like so many young defensive players coming out of college go, whoa, I've never seen the fullback. I've never seen a pulling guard. I, whoa, this is different for me. So there's that aspect too where teams are doing it. We know how awesome the play action pass yeah, has become right. and how effective that is. But listen, I think this is a gr- it's a great conversation. And to what you're saying, you know, you mentioned some of the teams and the, the teams of the top rushers that are second round picks. The Eagles, the number one running team in football. You know, there's Miles Sanders. Second round pick. Second round pick. And really wasn't even like, you know, he was hurt for the year. He's not like a guy you look at and go, oh, that's the bell cow. They got a quarterback who runs the ball too, so that spreads the wealth and helps out the running back position. So schemes and everything like that play into this as well. Um, but you know, there's still value in the running back. There still is. You still look at these teams towards the top of football. You just, you still go, okay, they got talent back there nonetheless. It might not be Jim Brown or Emmett Smith or whatever, but guys that still can get yards when it's there to be had and, and do a little extra too. I kind of look at it like the one of the equivalents on the offensive side of the ball, something we hear a lot when a backup quarterback comes in. It's like he can just be a game manager and they can win a couple of games. Well, that game manager is still going to have to hit a couple third and eights during the game. He's yeah. still going to have to play the difficult yeah, part right, of quarterback. Right. And you can say we don't need a running back that's that good. They're going to be a handful of games – every season where you want to lead with the run, even though it's not what you normally do. Definitely. There are drives and plays in the game where if your running back isn't really, really damn good, you're screwed. Right. So it's like I can jump on either side of the argument so easily. You definitely can. There, there is value. It's just about is the value in there worth it right. for top five, top ten picks? And that's where the NFL, I think, is finally going, uh, okay, I'm, we're not going to do that anymore unless it's just so crazy that, okay, right. we'll do it. The league has become more specialized, to your point, too, to where, you know, one week a team looks at it and goes, wait, we got we to gotta throw the ball yep. in the back out of the backfield. Yeah. Screw the guy that's our best runner. Now let's use the pass-catching one. Yeah. And now he's abusing some weak side linebacker. But then to your point, too, yeah, then the next week you play a team and go, whoa, they got a really good pass rush. Yeah. But they're undersized and they're small. Let's run it at them. Let's do that. And now the other running back's off the bench and a different skill set. So there is. There's a lot of things that play into this, and the NFL is more specialized now than ever before in the history of the league. So what we'll do today, Chris will roll out his top five running backs, five to one, and he mentioned that he loves the depth of this class. So because of that, I think we're also going to talk a little bit about some of your honorable mention guys, yep. some players you think will be good in the league but didn't quite make your top five. We'll yeah. get to that. Sure. Before we get to your top five, yeah. uh, just a couple more general things. Your 2022 draft rankings, just kind of from, from 10,000 feet here, what do you look for when you're scouting running back prospects? A couple of questions here uh, from our friends who, who listen along with us. Tripod two, two Times says, why are running backs so hard to evaluate? Seems like there are always a few late-round guys who pop up on the scene that nobody talked about after draft time or around draft yeah. time. Yeah, it's a great question. It's a deep one. It really is. Like This is one where I, I sit here and – you know, I didn't know this question was coming, so my brain already started rattling off things where I started going, well, shit, we can sit here for 30 minutes and can't talk about this, really. Here's the, the first things I would tell you. One, hard to evaluate. The biggest thing is the college game is different than the NFL game. It really is. So you might look at a guy in college and go, whoa, he's really fast. Look at all these big runs. But then he gets in the NFL, and it's not the kind of speed that is a big difference maker in the league because now, oh, wait, there's a line, there's linebackers that are running 4-4, and the safety runs. 4-3 and all the corners so now that speed that you looked at on film and you know we're not sure about the talent he was playing against and all that type of stuff so that can lead to misevaluation or you know the same thing with power runners right and all of that too you just don't know how a running back is going to be able to t- okay yeah cool he broke tackles in college Oh, but that's right. He played in the Big 12. There's not one damn NFL linebacker or safety in the damn league. Boy, he's breaking their tackles. What do you look for so, then when, when there's such right. an advantage? Like, what, what's one trait that always stands out to you no matter what the competition is doing? I think speed, acceleration, you know, and, and you know, to a degree where I was going there a little bit, it was like is contact balance, mm. right? And to evaluate that a little bit to where – you know, you know, again, I think there's a there's a different animal in that department where let's take a Nick Chubb from Georgia. Right. You know, it, yeah, he's he broke tackles in college and does all that stuff. And you go, OK, cool. Great, great, great. 
you know, and then you go, okay, wait, is he going to be able to do that in the NFL? And, you know, okay. And he can, mm -hmm. you know, had the size and the legs and some of the measurables that go, okay, and that makes you think he can do it because of what I'm seeing in college. Now you take another guy like Sony Michelle, he was breaking tackles in college and all that, but you get to the NFL and the size difference had an effect on him. He's a little bit of a smaller back, and now he doesn't break the same amount of tackles he did in college right. because the linebackers are a little bigger, the safeties are a little bigger, the defense ends are a little bigger. So he could break the tackle of the 248-pound defense end, but now the defense ends 268, and it's a different thing, and he can't break that tackle. So there, that's where it's tough, you know, let alone dictating the speed, let alone we get into, again, you know, stats and things like that where – Oh, this guy's running through holes, and oh, it's pretty good. Oh, man, man, oh, wow, he's hitting that hard and making moves. Okay, well, it's easy to be a running back when there's holes and everything. You play loose, and you just start, start going pedal to the metal every play. Right. You know, and then, but you can take the other guy and go, well, he's actually just as talented, but he's on a team where he never has a hole. So every time he gets the ball, he's like, wait, oh, wait, there was a hole, but I'm used to not having a hole. So I kind of danced and wasn't sure it was going to be there, and now I don't look as good on film. So those would be some things uh, that. I would say jump out. But running back one more thing than another, and what I learned too, even through some of my bad evaluations, is that the size power factor plays into the NFL game at this position maybe more than other positions. Hmm. I really do believe that Tell as far more. as just the – let's go to last year, Javion Hawkins, right? And I think we have a list, uh, Pete, if we want to jump ahead to that. That would work the uh, 2021 top five running backs. Throw right. that up there. There we go. ETN, Carter, Hawkins, Harris, and Williams there at five. Go right. ahead. Well, so, like, you know, I shit the bed here a little, right? But this, I like my top about? five, but number three was wrong, right? Now, I didn't know some of the other, all, there was off the field issues. You know, I think he's a little bit smaller in person than I thought he was. I think that led to it, too. And again, I didn't get to meet him in person. But I think I put too much, you know, into, whoa, here's a hole, and look at how fast he can run and fly through there. All right, well, that's not realistic in the NFL. I mean, you get a hole like some of these guys do in college in the NFL, like that, like the, guy, the holes he was running through last year, yeah. where I go, man, you know, Nick Chubb might have only saw one hole like that the whole year, right, to where he could just run through it and go, man, here I go, I'm taking off. You know, realistically in the NFL, you get the ball. Oh, wait, I had to make a guy miss. Oh, wait, now I got a hole. I made this guy miss. Oh, I broke a tackle and stiffed on him. Now I can turn it on. And I would go, well, J.B. on Hawkins is not going to be able to do this stuff right. to get to that point is what we're talking about. And that's where I misevaluated for sure. Uh, so that's something I've tried to correct myself on and keep myself, you know, on my P's and Q's in that department here. How about Najee Harris at four after yeah. watching his rookie season? Active as hell. I think right. He had over 300 carries and – Kind of struggled to be over four yards per carry, which yeah. I think is a knock. But him at four as a first-round pick, what do you think? Now? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I have I – obviously was a little low on four. I'm not like – I don't sit here at this list, though, other than Javion Hawkins and have too much of an issue with what I have there. Again, we didn't see ETN because right. he got hurt. Yep. Michael Carter, when he got healthy in a groove with the New York Jets, I mean – you know, people go back and watch. He had a few games and some plays where you just go, whoa, like there's something to Michael Carter. There's no question. But Harrison Williams are those guys that I was just kind of talking about where, you know, again, I know like, you know, what you're saying with Harris, the stats don't pop off at you. Yeah. They don't. But man, there is so many good four and eight yard runs or runs that I went. He got zero, but he should have lost three. But he broke someone's ankle and broke a tackle to get back to the line of scrimmage. The passing was, game wasn't helping him either. No, no, exactly right. So you got no passing game to stretch the field. Yeah. That's a great point. So you got everybody always close to the line of scrimmage because it was dink and dunk and so many short passes there. Um, but the, the, the same with Javante Williams. I think that's where I missed on them. It's the value of the run where, oh, there was only two yards there, but they got eight. Mm. how important that is in the NFL, and that's where it's different than college, and that's where maybe I didn't give those guys quite enough credit for that aspect of their game. It'll be fun to watch ETN yeah. this year. It kind, will Kind be. of see where he – because yeah. he was so electric in college. Right. Loved watching him. Has a little mix of both of, like, these guys. That, like, can do some Michael Carter break your ankle stuff. Yeah. But also, ETN has a little bit of a power aspect, too, to where – he can do, oh, that was, there's only two yards, but he got seven because he broke a tackle and drove the pile forward. He has a right. little of that ability, too. If, if, if you kind of group together the two Carolina guys, Michael Carter, yeah. Javante Williams, after watching a little year one, yeah. which one do you see a, a brighter future for? Well, 
Mm, it's a tough one. They're two different guys. And, you know, Michael Carter has a little bit, more, of course, more of the space element, come out of the backfield, catch some more passes. But, you know, I really like Javante Williams. I really do. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Like, he'd be one where I guess if I had to reevaluate it, yes, I should have put him a little – I should have put him higher. Okay. You know, there were so many good, powerful runs. And – you know, powerful runs to where we talked about he breaks tackles, and then he was able to, now I'm out in space and going to run for 30 more yards. Uh, I was really impressed with him. And to me, I think he's capable of doing more with less than Najee Harris at times mm. and doing more with more, mm. if that makes sense. The more with less does. I want to hear more about more with more. More with more of like, oh, here's a hole, and there's 25 yards to go get it. Go get it. He can get it. Najee Harris, like I even said last year, and I even saw that this year where I went, oh, he got a good run, but damn, he just can't accelerate or explode. And he, he got a 12-yard gain because he that last guy just shoestringed him. Right. And he got 12 instead of Javante Williams got 25. Right. So that's where I like Javante a little bit more. But Najee Harris is, was damn good, and I was certainly wrong with – with uh, putting him that low. There was a running back, uh, my brief time in Minnesota, I, I forget his name, but he, he had a hilarious line. He said, you need two yards, I'll get you three. Yeah. You need four, I'll get you three. Like, <laughs> that's what he had. <laughs> right. That, that was right. his gear. Like yeah. doing more with more wasn't, yeah. wasn't really No, that's not what, what his thing he was. was. Right. Yeah. He was going to smash somebody <laughs> when nothing was there and get you a yeah. little bit more or push the pile a little bit. And there is value in that. And yeah. there's some guys in this draft that are like that. Might have been Leroy Horde. Oh, could have been Leroy. Been Leroy that, Horde. Yeah. He could have been that kind of guy. That, for that sure. name comes to mind. Okay, yeah. we were just talking about Javante Williams, your fifth back from last year. Let's get to your top five this year. Starting out at number five, who's on your list? Uh, Ty Davis Price from LSU. All right. All right. That's where we're going to – this is, to me, one, one of them – you know, this is a fun watch. This really was. You know, first off, six foot, 211. I don't know. I want, what I really would like to know is what he played at during the season because he looks like he's bigger than that on the NFL – I mean, on the college football field. And, you know, has a guy, here's a guy that's got a little bit of everything, in my opinion, as far as what I like at the running back position. Had, we see plenty of plays to go, hey, he's got speed to break 40 and 50 yard touchdowns against elite SEC competition and go, that's an I know those guys and those are NFL corners and they they're he's running away or scoring touchdowns on the same field as them. You know, and then has man, what I think I was blown away by with with was the physicality in which he runs it. Mm. How many plays and times where I went, Whoa, there's not a lot there, four yard gain. What? He got eight? He got seven. If he, he got ten. Yeah. That's where I was really impressed by him. I mean, to me, that's even more useful. It shows up more in the NFL it than does. someone who can hit you a home run. If, I if know. it looks like a loss of two and you actually get one yard, that extra two or three, I mean, that that comes into play every single down. Agreed. And that's where I know I've messed up a little in the past because I get a little obsessed with the, the sexiness stuff mm. or the big play ability. And they got to go, wait, wait, no, wait, hold on, hold on. The NFL is different here. We got linebackers who run 4-4. Four, four, yeah. And they're 245, and that guy that's big play is never going to break the tackle getting through the line of scrimmage to, to get there. So B Davis Price has that. You know, so the plenty of speed to break the big plays. He has a special way in two different ways that I like. Like, like he, he's got the jump cut, right? And for anybody out there, the jump cut. Like, going to run between the guard and the center gap right there, right on the right side, right in that hole between the guard and the center. Right. And all of a sudden he's up there and oh man, the, 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 the gap closed. He can just jump his body to the right, still stay square to the line of scrimmage and then reaccelerate and go. And why that's important is because now your shoulders are still in a position to, if people come in, you could take the blows and continue to go, let alone your body's in a position to accelerate. Right. Yeah. That's where jump cuts it, are really good. It's kind of a must have right now. With, if, if you can just everybody picture that stretch zone run to the right. You see something back to the left. I mean, that jump cut is needed all the time. It definitely is. And, and really right at the all, line of scrimmage. And really all aspects of any the running scheme. So yeah. you're right. There's that, you know, following the guard between the hole. Oh, I was going to go here, but the linebacker kind of, oh, I got to jump and get over here. You know, he had that that I liked. But what I really liked even more was, you know, his, his feet. 
He kind of has a way of weaving through traffic. He's got very nice loose hips to where, again, I wish people would watch this, but doesn't need to like break down, right? And I'm, I got a five yard gain. I'm up in the hole. Doesn't need to like, oh, I got to break down and do this to make somebody miss. Can kind of just wiggle his way hmm. through. Oh, you got your shoulder on my hip. It doesn't really matter. I'm still running. So he was really good at that and had very good feet to, okay, wait, I'm running here and pitter patter, boom, stick my foot in the ground and cut this way I, I wrote in fact he reminded me of a little bit of Leonard Fournette that way you know you think about Leonard Fournette has a little bit of that he sometimes has a little bit of that yeah, Fred Flintstone yeah. pitter patter run right yeah. but that allows him to weave through little tight spots in between the tackles to get yeah. extra yards I really like that good. so sticks his foot in the ground pretty good speed 448 which I thought was pretty true for this guy I thought he was a low 45 high 44 type of guy but it's an interesting blend of of, you know, game breaker ish type speed, right? Then you got the size where, again, even if it is 211, it's okay. The majority of the weight is in his legs, it looks like. He's got mm. great legs. And then the power, the power is real. I mean, he looks to run people over or, hey, there's nothing there. I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to go get three yards. It's six foot 211. I mean, just from me, you see that and you're like, okay. Yes. That's pretty thick. He was a surprise to me. He was he was a more of a I, I, I knew this guy was a good player. I, I guess I was a little blown away with how many yards after contact he got, you know, how many times I went, Oh, it's an eight yard gain, he put his shoulder down and it became a fourteen yard gain or he had people hanging on him and he still put that's to me where he, he really ju- jumped out. So, so if uh, I like the player a lot. If I set the unofficial uh, over under at Early to mid third round. Sounds like what you're describing to me. Would you take the over or under? I'm going to say, yeah, I look at him as probably being right in that range of like 50 to 70. Okay. Right? Yeah. Probably somewhere in that range, you know? So that would take you to about so the mid third round. So yeah. I guess I'm saying under there. Yeah. I guess, but it'll be right there in that, That's I think, right that little read. spot. I think so. Okay. You know, they're also and it's great. I mean, it's fun when when someone excites you and I can tell that, you you know, when you like someone, no matter what the position is, yeah. a little more than you thought. Right. It really kind of comes through. I like hearing that. There are always concerns, though. And I think with him, yeah, let's hit him. wide range of film out there looks awesome. One play, right. maybe the next uh, doesn't doesn't look like he's quite sure, a little unmotivated. The energy's not the same. Did you notice any of that? I, I, I really didn't. You know, I I don't. I think he's a little bit of a rhythm runner, okay. if you want me to say that, where he needs carries. Like, if he hasn't got the ball, like, as I started to watch there, the one thing that continued to, like, kind of show up to me when you watch games especially, as games went on, he was better and mm. better, you know? So where I think he just has to – he's a little bit of a – yeah, you don't want to give him just like, oh, here's one carry and then we don't give you the ball again for two quarters. Uh, that's where I looked at it. So like once he got in a flow and got a feel yeah. for how he needed to run, there was no indecisiveness or anything that I worried about. Mm-hmm. You know, So I, I really – I didn't have problems with that. You know, And one of the last things I wrote down is he just he gets better the more he got the ball as the year went on. He really did. You see, guys, they get tired of hitting him in a little bit in the third and fourth quarter. You know, He doesn't wear down. He's still got the quicks and everything along to go with it. But, no, I, I've heard some of those concerns, and I, I can't say that I saw them on film. So better in second half of games or better in the second half of the season? But a little bit of both, actually. Yeah. I would say a little bit of both. But really what I was really saying there was, yes, the second half of games. Okay, You could see – Hey, first few carries, maybe he's getting a little feel for the game. Now it's the third quarter. It's the same run play. He's got a little feel for how the defense is playing. You know, maybe he got coached on the sideline. All of a sudden, he's got to get a different gear on how he attacks right. the line of scrimmage. You can definitely see that. Sitting here listening to you, I come yeah. back to something you said right away in this podcast and how you like the depth of this class yes. a lot. And I think this is a good snapshot for it. You're talking about your fifth-rated running back in, in this much of a positive way. It speaks well for what you think of the class. He's and He is a... NFL starting running back like that's where I came away I think more of like blown away from the draft is that's why I, I want to make sure we get to the honorable mentions at yeah. the end a little bit yep. because I really came away like after the first day I me- I think I watched like 15 running backs in like the first day and a half or whatever and I came away going with like shit I think like 10 of these guys that I watched are like 
They're starters. That doesn't mean they're second round picks or, but like have starting caliber traits hmm. to where I go. Admit, two years from now, if they're the bell cow for this team, I will not be shocked. Wow. Yeah, that's, I, nice. I was amazed by that. Okay, so at five, Ty Davis Price, LSU, bringing us to number four. Number four. We're staying in the family here, okay? It's a family member. It's a good Guys, family for, it, for toting the ball. What? Holy cow. Holy DNA package, yeah. all right? James Cook, Georgia. That's where we're going next. Now, James Cook is, he's a little different than the guy we just talked about. This is where we get into the conversation about, you know, a little specialization, where teams like, what they expect from running backs. You know, James Cook, 5'11", 199. I don't think he is the guy that you want, you know, to run 27 times between the tackles and do that. That's not what he is. Let's throw up his measurables. Yeah. You keep introducing us to him sure. as, as we see an e easy, I think, fun thing to do. There we go. Compare him to his brother, Dalvin Cook. So there's what we see. He's a little taller, but he doesn't weigh as much. Uh, let's see the speed. Yeah, both in the 4.4s. Four yeah. James Cook, 4.42. Four Dalvin right. Cook, high 4.4s. Four uh, vertical jump. James Cook a little bit better. Broad jump, James also better that one as well. James is special. He is. He doesn't have the power his brother had. You know, his brother's got a special lower half to where, you know, again, I bet you I bet you Dalvin weighs more than 210. I bet you that's I was, like I was thinking the for the 40, <laughs> yeah. I got to get down a little weight. Yeah. So I would bet you he's closer to 218, 220. Carries himself more towards 215 or 220. I think so. The way his the body there, looks, yeah. exactly. The way he takes hits, yeah. you know, his acceleration. I think things like that are a little bit better than his brother James here. But James is phenomenal. I mean, again, when you talk about this is a space running back. Yep. This is a like a little bit of a, hey, outside zone. You know, we're going to go that way. Oh, we saw you see a gap between the right guard and the right tackle. There it is. Put your foot in the ground and fly through it. And then once you get through it, hey, now you can make some people miss and do all that. But that's what he is. And, and really for his size, runs with a little bit better power than you would expect. I mean, doesn't just go down on contact. See a lot of plays where people hit him on the edge of the side and he stays up. But I think there's, there's two things. Like, like, you know, unbelievable in space. The speed is real. Don't care who it is. And you see him, you go, oh, it doesn't matter. Alabama, Tennessee, whoever. He can run by and run with all these teams, right? Acceleration is like oh, through the roof's good. Through the roof. Where you just go, well, zero to 60 in, in two steps, right? And then catches the ball. Right out of the backfield, sixty-seven that's, catches for seven thirty. I mean that uh, that jumps out to me. First of all, the number and a lot of times backs catch a lot of balls and yeah. it's like six yards per catch. He's right. over ten yards per reception. I love that. Bringing us to this question yeah. from uh, at Barbecue Chicken Forty Three. Good handle there. I by like the way. that. Thoughts on James Cook's value as a pass catching back? It seems like that's where the value at the position is going, but no one seems to be talking about Cook. Yeah, uh, people will be talking. I'm sure there's a, Cook is that guy that like a lot of teams are watching. And go, oh, I hope everybody thinks he's. Too small and can't play <laughs> running back for our team. Let's not say anything. I mean, yeah, he's a difference maker. He's a game breaker. There's just not many guys that you come across like this. Tailback, weapon, slot receiver. I don't give a f what you call him. Yeah. The guy's fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's period. What kind of so, passes is he catching? Like check downs out that's of the backfield? Yeah, I'm What's glad it? you're taking me there because that's where it is. You know, first off, he's, gonna, he's, a, he's a top notch route runner. Like, runs like a wide receiver. Nice. So you got that. He's going to be able to come out of the backfield. And if he got, you know, all the Alvin Kamara, Sean Payton, Drew Brees stuff, the halfback choices, come out. We're going to give you an option according to the coverage. You read it the right way and how they're playing you. And you got to cut one of three ways. He's going to be amazing at that stuff. Yeah. Off the charts, let alone when you put him out at receiver. Yeah. I mean, slants, slant goes. So, like, go routes. You're talking not just the, the receiver yeah. where he's just outside the tight end box. No. Like, out wide, he out can do that. wide too. Wow. Yeah, I think he's a guy you can legitimately go. Hey, it's third and four. We got we we had him in the backfield. We motioned him out. Yeah. He's outside. We're gonna throw an outside slant to him on a That's, safety or linebacker. That is an asset. I know. And then let alone reverses, speed yeah. sweeps, all of that. So, you know, that's that's the thing to me that was he's a natural runner. He's got very good vision. You know, he's just got a good feel for the blocking at times where I'd return plays on and go, wait, how did he see that hole there already? He just got a feel and kind of knowing how it's gonna 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 go. And of course, can turn five into twenty five in a hurry. Oh, there's no hole, bounces it outside, and can turn the corner about as easy as anybody and running back in the draft that way. More fun with numbers and stats. Uh Never had more than 12 carries in a game at Georgia. Does, yeah. that, does that concern you at all? No, it doesn't. It, it, you know, one of the things, I'm glad you brought this up too. Yeah. You see enough. 
there's enough over the last few years to go, I mean, how much do I got to see? The guy right. can break ankles and run by people. I look at it as a positive. I do. Oh, just in terms of wear and tear? Don't even do it. I, I'll give a lot of coaches credit here, and we're going to get into some of them. We're going to get another one right after this where – uh, you could tell there's a there's a concerted effort by some of these college coaches not mm. to kill these young kids. Because, because the other way of looking at it, and it's a fun thing to do this time yeah, of year, if right. you want to look at the concern side right. and say, God, if he's that good, why, why aren't they letting him touch the ball more? I know, I know. Well, they're at also a place where – you know, the other guy, even Sharon yeah. uh, and, and, you know, again, uh, all right, I'm going to just throw that out there. The kid, his teammate, White, right? Uh, is it Kazir White? I'm, I got so many names in my head. Excuse me if I'm blanking on just for a second here. Yeah, Kamir White. Excuse me. Zamir White. Pretty good. Yes. He's pretty damn good, too, yeah, yeah. right? So some of these schools, they got two pro running backs. It's yeah. just you got to deal with it. And, and maybe a third that you don't know about yet. And then they're getting a little specialized, too, yeah. you know, what we're talking about a little. Just like, you know, George is going, wait, okay, bell cow running back. Hey, put White in. Yeah. Hey, we want to get into the space game? Throw, you know, Cook back in. But elite runner and wide re- elite route runner, elite wide receiver out of the backfield and being able to do that. He's going to kill linebackers in the NFL you Sounds know, like he could kill Nickelback as well. Definitely can. He's he's a, he's a legit like slot receiver type yeah. to way he plays, and you know, plays with better strength and, and size than his measurables would indicate. You know, and and the last thing I wrote is, you know, the, the guy's real, and and I wrote some of the names I wrote down that he reminded me of: J.K. Dobbins, you know, mm. coming out of Ohio yeah. State of the Baltimore Ravens, yep. right? Jarek McKinnon when he came out. You know, you saw him in Kansas City this year. Hey, that's a guy that's had two bad knee injuries, so don't go about there. You know, Aaron Jones-ish, mm. right? But I thought even more elusive in space than Aaron Jones. You know, maybe didn't have the power to lower shoulders like Aaron Jones did coming out. Yeah. But able to be every bit as fast to go 70 to the house and I think can make people miss in space better than Aaron Jones. So those I, are some of the names he reminded me of. I didn't think I was going to go with this kind of question yeah. when I saw him at number four, but just listen to you talk about him. Uh, one number here to back this up. I think Saquon Barkley in the last four years, the only running back to go in the top 10. All the other first round running backs, I think 24 to 32. And I bring that up because, okay, late 20s, in the 30s, do you think a team that loves a running back in the passing <laughs> game might consider him that high? I, I don't think they will. I don't. Um, you know, one, I think the depth of the, the position this year in the draft can hurt some of these guys as far as because somebody they might just go, we need another position here. Yeah. We love this kid. But we know there's another pass catching running back that we just got, just you know, not too big of a drop off grade later on. So th- I think that that could hurt some of these guys. Yeah. He's a little specialized as far as like what we talked about. So, you know, he's not going to be the guy that's going to go. We're going to give him the ball 25 times a game. It, it would be a team with a specific. Uh, running they would want to really exactly wants. right. I think it would be like, you know, hey, if we were sitting there, Kansas City Chiefs got it all. And they did it. With Cl- that's ago. what I mean. Yeah. To me, this is like, oh, man, if they had James Cook instead of which Clyde Edwards Swear, who I love, but has been a disappointment. Yeah. There's no joke. Yeah. That would be the type of thing where, oh, maybe. But I do think we're talking about a guy that's top 45, 50 okay. picks of the draft here. I do, definitely. It's second round. He's nice. too big of a playmaker. It's too explosive. There's just not many guys that can do what he can do with the ball in his hands this way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that brings us to three. At five, you had Ty Davis Price, LSU. Four, James Cook. We just talked about him out of Georgia. And I, I just have a feeling this SEC theme is going to continue here at number three. Yes, it is. And we're going to Florida. Damian Pierce. And All we right. have some combine sound from him before you jump cool. into this. Cool. This is from Indianapolis. And he was asked the question what is your running style? Damian, how would you describe your running style? Oh, how would I describe it? Uh, angry, <laughs> up tempo. I mean, I all run with good intentions, so, you know. <laughs> and he said all that with a big smile on his face. Love it. So, what are you showing me well, here? Well, here, like, fourth to last. I don't know. It's my script handwriting, but this kid is. Violence. Yes. Violence. It is. He said angry. You say violent. I love violent, that. My running back. Violent. Sign me up. No doubt. I. Another guy that you know. Again, you, you hear about some of the big names in this, right? And you know, then you get to this process, and oh, okay, running back from Florida, blah blah blah. And one of the more pleasant surprises of the whole evaluation process for me here too. Again, it's just it's a third one. It seems like it, a pleasant it is. Surprise. I know. I listen. This I, I this was not an easy top five to do. Yeah, it was not in a good way. In, in a good way, exactly right. But I mean, 
This kid is just a little ball of muscle. 5'10", 218. 5'10", 218. And again, I doubt it was 218 when he was playing. <laughs> it was 218 to make sure he cut, ran 4'5 at the some combine. To get to Indy. Yeah. Yes, no doubt about it. It just doesn't look that way. But thick as hell. Power. Can't get him on the ground. You know me. I love me some thighs and some butt. That's right. And he's got thighs and butts for days. Right? And... He's a little bit like we talked about, you know, with the pitter-patter run. He's got that whole aspect, and I love it. First off, the acceleration is phenomenal as far as getting to the hole, right? His 4.59, 4.6 speed, yeah, that's about what he is. He's not a guy that's going to run for 70-yard touchdowns, but he's going to run for a lot of quick, explosive 10- and 20-yard runs. We're going to go, holy crap, did he get shot out of a con cannon mm. going right through the hole there. That's where he's really good. And then – like so the acceleration but then the power and contact balance it's probably the best in the draft wow. out of all the running backs who's More, he remind you of kareem hunt nice yes and you know i kept sitting there going watching him and i'm watching him going man who does this kid remind me of there's somebody it was driving me crazy and then i went you know what i think it's kareem hunt he kind of was walking back to the huddle on a play and i was like man that that's that's Kareem Hunt's walk. That's who he's reminding me of. And then I looked up Kareem Hunt. I went, Kareem Hunt, combine. And I went, holy shit. Same. They're the fucking carbon copy of each other. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's a style that's very similar to each other. So power, contact balance, you know, off the charts good. I mean, it, it's it, the acceleration. I told you about that. All right. Then. Like, because of the quick feet and the pitter-patter and all that, has an incredible way of making people miss. I mean, he's he's not, like, one-on-one, -on -one, Yeah, the one never gets him. Never. I mean, I, I it was one thing I wrote down as I went on. I just went one-on-one, -on -one, the guy never guy never gets him. I had the same feeling I've had the last three or four years with you where I'm, I'm listening to you describe someone at four, three, or two, and I'm like, Gosh, he might be your guy. That why might be is he not guy. higher? I know, I know. Well, this is a year you must where love some, one and two. One and two are pretty damn good. They're special this year. They are because this guy is special too. Yeah, he is. This guy is a guy that I look at and go, he could lead the league in rushing three years from Man. now, two years from now. Yeah, you know. So you know, to talk about that. He's quick to the hole. You know. Uh, he can redirect in a hurry when the cl the hole closes up, and then if he can, he's got a tremendous power just to lower his pads and and do that. So, you know that that's where he's great. But like he's one of these guys where if you don't square him up and wrap up perfectly, you're not going to tackle tackle him ever. Mm. Guys fall off of him left and right. That's where he's good. Catches the ball well. That was just my next like, Good. Just like Kareem Hunt, where well, I went, guy's kind of a natural. Like, like catches it like not a liability or are you actually pretty good it at it? It looked like it was natural. Now, you don't get to see, he's not lining up a slot receiver like James Cook and yeah. doing all of that. But it wasn't like it was, I'm on the run and I'm snagging it out of the air. It wasn't like, oh, I've got to slow down and make yeah. sure I catch it and then take off. Or, oh, gosh, I'm going to bring it into my body and just make sure I secure it and then try to run. It looked natural to me. You know, I don't think you're going to make a living on going, wait, we want to make this guy a 60-catch-a-year guy. Yeah. That's not what he is. But not going to hurt you. But he's not going to hurt you. Yeah. And if you do got to call a pass play with him, he's going to be able to do it. Or he's in on first down. You do a play-action pass. You got to throw to him in the flat. He's going to catch it and do something with it. Can but, you? Can, yeah, he was. He was he was fun to watch, man. Can you tell with any of these guys? Because I know the evaluators really want to know what's he like in pass protection because that's such yeah. a big part yeah. of it. Right. You can see him running around catching the ball, but right. since you don't know what the scheme was blocking-wise, it can be difficult to get a read there. Yeah. Could you with him or these other guys? Yeah, you can. He's going to be amazing at it. Right, it's like it's just because he's he's so thick and powerful, like him squaring you up and taking you on. He loves it. Like it's not even it goes into his violence or I want to hurt you or whatever right. else. That's that's who he is. Cook, liability in pass okay. pro. You're you're definitely gonna be careful with him. Yeah. You're, you're, when he's in, you're probably gonna go. Everybody just get out. Mm -hmm. And if they blitz, we're gonna get at you quick, and then you run. It's probably right. I know. It could be, you know so you, you got to be careful with that to yeah. a degree. You know, even with the Ty Davis price, right? It could. It needs work. It does. You know, with running back, so much of the time, though, I do think at times it can be a little over evaluated. Mm. You know, it, it, it can be, but it is such a huge part of whether they're let part. on the field right away. No, it, it can be In the, the trust tree. Yeah, that's the the first thing. Can he just figure out who he's supposed to block? Right. The rest of the stuff, 
You know, I always looked at it like, because I remember getting guys in the end of, oh, he's not the best at, you know, pass pro. We wish he was a little better or more physical. But it, it goes into a little bit of the old adage of like I talk about. You get in the NFL, and it's so cutthroat, mm-hmm. and people aren't kissing your ass. And you got guys in the in your running back room who are also good, right. and they can block the blitzer. So do you want to stay on the field mm-hmm. and play? And and do you want to make $10 million a year in a few right. years from now so team will sign you that? And that brings it out in these guys. Because it's not like these guys are like, you know, Ty Davis. It's not like he's afraid to balk. I mean, he's running over people like he's a Mack truck all the time. Right. It's a little bit, I think, of I, I'm going to just try to chop his leg off here. I'm going to just try to hit him on the edge and knock him down that way. You know, kind of kind of cheating their way through it to a degree. Yeah. You know, I get more worried when I look at the tape and I just go, oh, the guy has no f***ing clue what his responsibility was. Yeah. That's when I get worried. Yeah. So I didn't see that from any of these guys where I went, oh, they're clueless and they don't understand it. Right. You know, does some of them need some work? Yeah, they do. Lots you love about Pierce, obviously, yes, but th- I'm sure there are reasons he's – three instead of one yes what concerns are out there for you well you know I, I don't have a lot of concerns I think the other two guys are just a little bit more special okay. you get to see you know a few more variety of different types of run so it's more about the other guy's strengths and I think so I don't look him. at weaknesses here the only weakness I would tell you is yeah I don't think this is a guy that's going to be able to like you know and you're if you're on the ball at your own 40 yard line he's not going to turn the corner and run for a 60 yard touchdown but so what yeah exactly. you know he's going to make up for it for the amount of like oh that should have been a four yard run but it was a 20 yard run yeah. oh that should have been a two yard run and it was a 12 yard run that's where he's going to make up for the lack of game breaking you know four two four or three game game breaking speed. Okay, I'm yep. impressed with All your right. third back. Anything else you want to go with? No, on him? I think I think we're good. I okay. just you know, hey, and, you know, to your point or the earlier thing with James Cook, doesn't have a lot of carries, doesn't have a no, lot of wear doesn't. and tear. Hundred carries last year. It's right. not a lot. Uh, it's not a lot. Nine career games with with ten plus carries. Also, not a lot. Not a lot. I know, but to me. And the fact that he's that physical, I'll take yeah. it, and I think that's I think it's a positive, really, in the end. Ty Davis Price five, James Cook four, Davian Pierce number three, number two, buddy. Number two, going to your home state. Uh oh. Yep. Uh oh. The other school. The other school. Yeah. The lesser school. The Cyclones. The lesser school. Okay. All right. I'll say that while you're here, at least. When when I was there, they had Blaze Bryant got drafted. Remember Ooh, Blaze Bryant? I do remember by the Blaze Jets? Bryant. Yeah, yeah. I do remember like that. A 10th round pick. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got. In That's Iowa all State. I got. David Montgomery. Right. Chicago Bear. There's, yep, he's pretty good. I think I, I think I've emptied the tank on Cyclone running backs. Yeah, so. uh, yeah, I think you have emptied the tank. But Brees Hall, who yeah. we're going to talk about right now, player, he's going to make people know who Iowa State is yeah. for sure. You know, and and I know. Listen, I know a lot of people say this is the number one running back in the draft. I, I like Brees Hall a lot. The guy I'm going to talk about next, I like more, mm-hmm. and I have no doubt that I like the other guy more. I do. Now, Brees Hall, you know. Where do you want to start? I mean, got game breaking speed right off the bat, right? Ran four three nine. I don't know if it looks like four three nine on five, the field. Five eleven two seventeen under four four. That's I know. Like right away you're like, okay, right. You have my attention. Exactly. You know, it's those are Jonathan Taylor esque yeah. numbers. Jonathan Taylor, I think, was two thirty or two twenty eight and had the four three nine. And it shows right? up. And it and Brees Hall. I'll say this. It shows up. It, it's I don't know if it's four three. It's mm-hmm. low four four ish to That's me. That's good. Yes, it That's is good. good. Either way, he is the kind of guy that can turn the corner and run for a seventy yard gain and be a touchdown and hit his head on the goalpost. Does all that stuff. Runs hard. You know he does fall falls forward a lot. And what nice. I mean by that is yeah, you know takes that big blow and the pile doesn't stop there. He gets two, three more yards. So, oh, wait, it was going to be second and five. Oh, wait, no, Brees got – he got two or three more. It's it's second and two or second and three. Huge difference for a play caller and an offense that way. So that was big to me. You know, he gets you – he's going to be really good in the short yardage situations, right? You know, he's he's got the loose hips like I was talking about with Ty Davis to where now – He's not going to break you down and break your ankles. And this is, what, to me, one of the things that the first guy that we'll talk about here in a minute had. And he, he's not going to be, oh, we're in the hole. I'm going to get in a wide 
stands and try to break you and get you out of position and then reaccelerate because I got you off balance and go. He can't do that. That's mm. not what he does. Mm. He's not great at that. But he is good at doing what I talked about a little bit with Ty Davis as far as weaving. Oh, wait, there's a guy about to tackle me. Well, let me move my hips. And, you know, I got pretty quick feet to where, yeah, you hit me, but barely right. on the edge of my thigh pad. So I I'm still going. That's I like that about him. He's kind of like when I watch him, like smooth and rhythmic to the point where it's almost like sometimes it looks like he's not going as hard as he should because he's so smooth. I, I know it, well, it's it's it, it's a compliment more than it is questioning his well, effort. But his running style is just kind of that way when you watch him. Well, that's why he's second though. Yeah, because there's too many runs where I go, you got to hit it here, mm. you got to hit it. It's there, go. There was too many runs. And I, I was going to get to this at the end, but because you say this, uh, and I just want to make sure I, I write to get this, you know, I got, I got to a point where I went, I wish he got more there. All right, so let me remind this. All right, so good baby, he was there. All right, so here we go. I'm, 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 I'm at my point. Sorry, I'm reading through my notes. You know, there was too many runs where I saw a crease, and I went, he should have got more. Mm. Where I go, what? Like, why didn't he hit it? Why didn't he put the pedal to the metal and go through that hole at a million miles per hour? So I wrote, I'm a little underwhelmed with that. And I wrote, ooh, I wish he got more there a lot, which was, you know, there was more there to be had. And I just felt like there was so many there where it was like, yes, he got an eight or 10 yard gain, but oh man, if he had just hit it hard, he would have split those two mm. and got a 30-yard game, but instead he got shoestring tackled or just tackled. And there was a lot of runs like that that, again, we're talking about the top of the top here yep. and how you differentiate the one and two running back in the draft. Right. Those are the little things that you start to look at because both guys that we're going to talk are freaks and can yeah. do awesome things. But that, to me, was he left some meat on the bone a little bit more than okay. the guy we're going to get to at number one in a few minutes. Well said. And I know I know, I kind of pushed you to jump ahead it's a little okay. bit. But, it's I all mean, good. You, you, you ran with that, no pun intended, yeah. very well because you, you, you took it to a place that was one of the questions that you had about him, right. which I think is good. So yeah. 1,500 rushing yards, a little more than that last year, led the FBS. How about as a receiver? Receiver is going to be good, too. He can do all of that. Definitely. Now, again, it's not James Cook. You're going to put him out at receiver and let him run slot routes and outside receiver routes. Yeah. But out of the backfield, wheel routes, halfback choice, yes, I'm going to do all of it. So that's he certainly has that aspect. And here, if you're watching these clips here, you see how it naturally is. I mean, it's, it's natural. It really is. So this is all – Three down, all around running back. Legs and ass guy too. Oh, he's got legs and ass. He's yeah. a long, he's a long strider, right? So this is another thing, you know. Long striding, it can be good, but it can also not be good sometimes when you're taking on shots through traffic or having to really accelerate in a hurry through a hole, right? This is one of the things that you know. I like the long strides, and there's aspects of it that are not the best for you that way. But I told you, he's a weaver. He's not a break your ankles or shake you type of guy that way. You know, not quite as twitchy and as explosive as I would have thought, to your point. It was a little bit more of a smoothness all the time. Yeah. And it, he runs, he can run fast very easily. But when it came to, oh, wait, there's nothing there in the hole, let me stop and then restart. I wasn't like, oh, whoa, well, that was explosive. Look at him restart and do that. I, I didn't say that as much as like I'm going to say the other guy there. Okay. Yep. Vertical 40 inches at the combine. That was the best, uh, the only one, the only running back there where his effort started with a four. That's good. And, Pete, I think we have, uh, we have his measurables from mockdrafttable.com kind of compared to some others if we want to run that guy up there. Okay, so that will eventually show up here. There we go. Measurables. And where he where he is there, yeah, he's a number a, of different things. He's he's a special athlete. I mean, he is off you know, the charts. Really, I mean, high up there and all these things, height, weight, all of it. It is I mean, ten yard split, forty yard dash, four three nine, as you mentioned. Yep, the vertical was the best. Uh, broad jump above 90th percentile. I mean, this is for that position a very good athlete. It's an extremely good athlete. It's it's a really good football player. I don't think you can miss here. You know, I don't, you know, it's a lot of similarities to Jonathan Taylor, like I said. I don't think he's as good as Jonathan Taylor was coming out. Mm. I thought Jonathan Taylor was more explosive and also broke more tackles. Uh, the, you know, the name I wrote down here, uh, you know, the guy he really reminded me of, and, and I'm going to pull it up just to give you a little bit of the measurables here, is Antonio Gibson 
of the Washington, Washington Commanders. Yeah. Yes. And I, I know I don't know if people think that's a good thing or not, but I think Antonio Gibson's a hell of a running back, all okay. right? Yeah. I don't look at it and go, "Oh, well that's how dare you say that." All right? And then you're just so you know, with Antonio Gibson, first off, Washington, you know, it's not the best offensive line or offense in football, but 6 foot, 228, all right? So Antonio Gibson's bigger than Brees yeah. Hall. He ran 439 just like Brees Hall. Had a little slightly less vertical jump at 35 inches, but you know he the the style and the way he runs it reminded me of him more than than anybody else. Um, and I really like this kid, but I didn't on Monday's podcast, right? Yep. Running backs, I started in the middle of the pack. I change it up with these teams. I don't always start at the top. Let me watch the best guy first. I like to change it up because sometimes I feel like if you watch the first guy first all the time, you're always basing everything off of that after that, right? So I kind of went to the middle of the pack. Monday's podcast, I was like, oh, Brees Hall is going to be a first rounder. No doubt about it. No doubt. You know, and I think he's my number one running back. I'd only really watched highlights of him to that point. I got done with the podcast that I ended up going right home to watch him. And I went, yeah. oh, shit, I don't know. And I got into a few of the other guys and the guy we're going to talk about in yeah. a second. And, yeah, I think it's close if he's a first rounder. I wrote anywhere, you know, 25 to 45. Okay. I think somewhere in that range. I wouldn't be shocked to be one of the end of the first. I wouldn't be shocked if it was the first five or ten picks of the second round. Like him a lot, maybe don't love him. Yeah, I think I'm, I guess I'm a little lower than maybe yeah. the rest of the world is on him a little bit. I have, I have one more issue with Hall I want to bring up and see yeah, what you think. Do. Especially because with a couple of guys we talked about already that hadn't carried the ball, or they did not carry the ball that much in college, you kind of like that. You get to Hall, yeah. 531 carries last two years. 111 more than any other running back in the Power Five. So it says a lot about his durability. Uh huh. Would you take it into consideration as a concern if you were thinking about drafting him? Yeah, uh, you have to. You have to. And that's where then now your off-the-field study comes into play, where let's see this guy in person. Yeah. I need to see I mean, with the running back. I got to see him with his shirt off and stuff. I got to see the body. Is this is this a is this guy jacked and like look like he's you know got the kind of body that can last for a little while, right? Or is it kind of soft and I go, oh shit, it might fall apart after two or three years. I want to know what his work ethic is like. I mean, those are things that now come into play with these type of guys, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's part of the reason Jonathan Taylor got drafted in the second round. Right. You know, but Jonathan Taylor is that guy that we're just talking about, like psycho trainer, right? Obsessed with every calorie he has, you know, let alone physically gifted. The shirt comes off. You go, holy yeah. shit, that's real. All right. So that that's that's where I think that makes you feel comfortable. And as we're seeing Jonathan Taylor through two years in the NFL, he doesn't show any wear and tear as of yet right now. So not. it's not foolproof. That's for sure. So four running backs that uh, you like a lot. We were at this point a week or two ago talking about quarterbacks, and I wouldn't have said that. I'm like, wait, Chris doesn't love the four quarterbacks no. that went before. I think no. you really like the four running backs we've already heard about, bringing us to number one. Kenneth freaking Walker. Yeah. I, I mean – what did you watch him play in the fall like yeah. october november i did I definitely mean, like the michigan game i saw that yeah, and right i mean he good. caught my eye like yeah. when i was going back yesterday and like going let me watch 10 more plays of each guy just so i can get feel good about my order right and all yeah. that my son came in when he was watching him he goes oh you 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 said he was gonna be awesome i remember watching him <laughs> this year in, in college you you said you liked him and i was like yeah i did you're right i was blown away by him when turning film on liked him even more than you he, thought without a doubt he is the best running back in this draft i have no questions about mm. that no questions about that he's everything he has everything we just talked about with Brees hall yeah except he runs angrier he breaks more tackles and he breaks more ankles so I want to go, okay, wait, there's the same guy except one – and they're equally as fast except one guy has more power and does more with less. And that's what I would just go, okay. That's, to me, a slam dunk that this is the best running back in this draft. His lead quality is? His lead quality, mm. And while you're thinking, I'll throw out – Because he's elite in this. a few areas, in my opinion. 4-3-8 at the combine? Exactly. 4-3-8 at the combine. Yep. You know, so I guess you would start there to go, he's a lead in that area. Speed. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's to me, got, mm, he got a lot of things I like. 
you know, a natural feel for running. Like I talked with James yep. Cook, where he runs up in the line of scrimmage and there isn't like, oh, wait, there's no hole. Let me just sit here and wait. It's just like he naturally finds the bounce lane or the next lane or whatever else. He's got great vision for cutback lanes. So he's great there. That's huge. But then, like, other than the kid from Florida, mm -hmm. that's the most violent runner in this draft. Mm. I mean, it's it's like... Oh, wait, I have no way to shake you out here or do anything? Screw it. I'm yeah. going to lower my shoulder, and you're going to pay for this being here in this position. To me, that jumped out. I haven't watched him as much as so you. you but you watched that. You saw that. I watched that. him in the fall yeah. quite a bit. And like even before you notice the speed, you notice how comfortable he is with contact. Contact. Man, does he not care about it. Right? Right. Just, yeah. you know, contact balance going through the hole, gets hit hard on the shoulder. He's still running. You know, somebody has their arms around him and it looks like they're going to drag him down and he drags himself out of it and right. keeps running and then then runs for 10 yards and then plants his foot in the ground and jukes the shit out of the guy and then runs 25 yards up the field more. I right. mean, there's so many unbelievable runs where you go, that should have been a five yard gain. And he got 25. That should have been a loss of two when he got 12 there. That's where I just came away with it and just went, whoa. Um, Here's an awesome one for yeah, you, Chris. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Per PFF, yeah. led the nation in broken tackles. Okay, that's, that's there awesome. There you go. But then after the comma, one fumble. Phew. Fumbled one time while seeking out and excelling uh, in contact. finding success around that much contact. Right, right. I know. I, it's, that, that says a lot. You He's would rocked up. I love his yeah. body. It's rocked up. It's a, different, it's a different rocked up than the rest of the group. You know, I and again, I haven't seen him with his shirt off yet, but I would think he's an Adonis. And the way his legs are, and then his neck, and that—I mean, it, it just his body looks like power. Even before you turn on the film, you just go, "Oh, oh this guy's great," you know. And then, you know, of course, the film backs it up. But you know, the ability to stick the foot in the ground, the ability to also weave, like we talked about with the other guys, but also can just break you down and cross you over. Like, you know, Barry Sanders-ish, where he gets a guy, oh, my gosh, that looks silly. He made that guy miss right. and keeps going. He has that. Um, you know, the acceleration is off the charts that way. Pass pro needs some help. Okay. Definitely does. And, again, it's not a, like, it's not a smarts thing or a – he just – he looks to, like – he takes the easy way out. He looks to hmm. let me get the let me get down low and chop his leg out. Okay. Or let me I don't want to square him up here. I just ran the ball five times in a row. Let me <laughs> kind of just stay on the edge and wait and try to hit him on the side and knock him out that way. There's yeah. definitely some of that. And, and he also only had yeah. 18 career catches. Yeah, there's not a lot. There's not a lot. You're not that that's something you're gonna have to kind of figure out mm -hmm. as you go. You're drafting this guy to be your bell cow. Where are you drafting? And him? be your superstar. Uh I, I'm drafting him in the end of the first round. Yeah. I am. You know, again, we know the running back, where it goes from there and all that. But, you know, I, uh, I, I would think he's the guy that, you know, and Brees Hall too. I yep. understand it. But this guy more so for me. Yeah. That you would be thinking, mm, we could take this guy in the end of the first and feel awesome about it. You, you've touched on this a little bit, but I, I want to kind of roll it out here as the hammer because so many people are thinking about Brees Hall against Kenneth Walker's or top back. Which one goes in the first round? The biggest difference between the two is Walker makes so much more with less, right? That would be my biggest thing. Where I came away with Brees Hall too many times going, ah, like I told you, he should have split that guy or hit it harder and he would have had a 30 yard game, but he got eight. And again, still, there's still a lot of other runs the other way. Again, we're being picky about the top two running backs in the sure. draft. Yeah. Walker, there's so many plays where in that same play I go, he hit it, he split the guys. I didn't even touch him. Yeah. Or or they did touch him and it didn't matter and he just ran through it. Or, you know, and I've, I I thought he was clearly more elusive than Brees Hall with the ability to make people miss and do that. So that's where, you know, I thought he was better. Really in about every area of Brees Hall, I went check Kenneth Walker, Kenneth Walker. Right. You know, both can go 70 to the house, you know, but Walker was quicker to accelerate and quicker in general, quicker to see the bounce lanes, right? Uh also better between the tackles. I'm writing. I'm letting you run my thesis here. The end. The last paragraph. Yeah. Walker also better between the tackles mm. as far as tough yards. Getting you know five when three was there. You know makes someone miss. Breaks tackles. Makes another guy miss for a ten yard gain. You know I wrote his visions better than than Hall. Walker need need to see more in the pass game. Doesn't do it much like I wrote. And then 
I wrote, no question, Walker makes more with less. Wakes m- way more yards after contact and breaks more ankles, right? And I just can't get over how violent he is as a runner. He reminds me of Joe Mixon. Nice. Yeah. I mean, top three running top back three running in league production. He's a shorter Joe pick, Mixon. Yeah. He's shorter Joe Mixon. The style in which he runs, the way he's rocked up, he's shorter Joe Mixon to me. So as I pointed out before, I mean, with the exception of Saquon Barkley, the, the running backs in the first round of the last four years have been 24 to 32. Yeah. You said you think he goes somewhere in the 20s. Do you think he's the one who goes somewhere before that 24? We haven't seen it besides Barkley in four years. Does he get consideration in the mid to late teens? I don't think he will. I because don't. of him or because of what the league I thinks think of the acts. league in general I don't think it's because of him you know I I don't you know and I'm, I'm sitting here looking at the end of the first round just going hmm is there anybody here that maybe they that would make sense like you know I look at Buffalo at 25 I, mean, I like Devin Singletary I mean man I don't know I look at Kenneth Walker and go he could change your I'm freaking nice team be. he could change yeah. your team maybe Josh Allen wouldn't have to run nine and, times again. On, on third and two you don't have to worry about Allen now you got a guy that'll do it right yeah. here you know, let alone, oh, man, we got to defend him, man. You know, you look at, yeah, I, I, there's some teams here that, uh, I mean, Tampa Bay, you know, they could look at it and go, hey, this is icing on the cake. We, our offense is kind of set. What, what Leonard Fournette is kind of a one-year deal. We're going to be kind of done here. Ronald Jones just left him free agency. That's right, yeah. Right? So I look at that to go, there's another one. But we'll see. I would say more likely than not, it'll end up being in the second round. Yeah. And again, I don't have a feel for the total draft yet, but I do think there's a ton of defense alignment and offense alignment that are going to get drafted. And because of the depth of the running back class, that might hurt some of these guys from going to the first. Top fives are always fun at every position uh, for all of us who love the draft, but especially when I can tell you really like oh, all the guys. Oh, man. Just a little something extra to it. So before we get to your honorable mention, just to recap, five, Ty Davis Price, LSU. Four, James Cook, Georgia. Three, Damian Price, Florida. To Brees Hall, Iowa State, and your top guy, Kenneth Walker, yeah. Michigan State, formerly of Wake Forest. Yes, sir. There's a list. That's a list. There's a list. That's a list. This is one position we do have to do the honorable mentions because I, I know that you love the class as I a do. whole. Right. So but let's start with Pierre Strong, Jr., South Dakota State. Yeah, I, I love Pierre Strong. Pierre Strong, Jr., Pierre Strong is the one I'm uh, I'm worried that I didn't have on the list that would come back in like a year from now. Everyone's like, you're an idiot he ran for 1200 yards last year they might say that anyway they might yeah. say that anyway most likely they will but you know the four low four three speed is very real and it's not just a speed guy now he's a little bit of a straight liner you know but he's he's the guy to me where i look at and go oh man if he's sitting on the board in the late second, third round, and the 49ers got the pick, the 49ers are going to take Pierre Strong because mm. he's the guy that we're talking about. Hey, outside zone, just run to the sideline, yeah. look at the line of scrimmage, and when you see a hole, put your foot in the ground and go. go. Yeah. And that's he's made for that. So, yeah, he's kind of got – you know, Jamal Charles. Wow. Yeah, Raheem Mostert ish type speed, right? Four so three less, seven in the conference. Four three seven, lesser conference of football, you know. So it, it does worry me. You know, he's not the best as far as he's a little bit of upright stiff runner. And, you know, I I guess I question contact, tough yards, things like that at the next level. That's probably why I kept him off the list. But, man, do I like that kid a lot. Another one you like a lot, Brian Robinson Jr., Alabama. Go ahead and throw up his measurables uh, because they're pretty good as well. They are. Uh, From Alabama. Also, like the way he catches the ball, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you like Najee Harris, I don't know why you wouldn't like Brian Robinson. Mm. Uh, to me, this is just like a little bit of a lesser version than Najee Harris. Six two two twenty five. Well, well, I don't know why this kid's not getting a little bit more buzz. This, this was what drives me crazy about the draft sometimes, where I want to go. Wait, the the difference between him and Najee is what? I don't really know what the big difference is, but this guy's not going to get the love. You know, uh, first off, it's just not sexy, but it's an incredible amount of eight and five and eight and five remarkable runs. He is very good in the past game and he's phenomenal in pass protection maybe nice. the best out of the whole group Good. in yeah. that department but I really liked him and again I don't think he's going to be the guy that's like you know a like I said a, a superstar but man he's going to be somebody's bell cow and help out a football team for sure Kyron Williams Notre Dame 
ready to go to this guy? Sure. And I have a question to get yeah. you started from goal line stand. Right. Hey, Chris and Paul, do you think Kyron Williams' measurables are too poor to be an effective NFL running back? I thought he could be a good NFL scat back, but he only ran 4.65 at 194 pounds. It's going to hurt him. I mean, you, you know that. But the, the my thing with them or, or him in general is he's a guy that is going to have a specific – role or skill set you know in the nfl to where even though it's four six five yeah i don't think it's going to affect it that much the team that really knows and values throwing to the back out of the backfield mm -hmm. he's really good at that he's a really good receiver he back. is really yes. good yeah. right he's special at running routes he catches the ball naturally like a wide receiver to your point again, the pass protection, good. he'd be another guy where I'd go, he's as good as anybody in the draft. He yeah. always knows where he's going to go. He's always got the perfect technique. So those teams, uh, I think that, yeah, they'll, they'll be valued. You know, I, I wanted to say, like, Pete, if you can look up real quick, like what did James White run in the 40 coming out of the draft that year? Um, because James White was Notre Dame too as well, right? Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin, excuse yeah. me. That's right. To where I don't remember it being – Four, five, seven, yeah. right? Yeah. So he plays. I, I, I saw him play quickness. every game of his career. It's smarts. He plays faster. He does play faster. He, you don't watch him and think, boy, if he was fast, he'd be, you know, then he'd be good. Right. Um, his effort and quickness and instincts are really, really good. Yeah. I came home from one of the games in South Bend this uh, this past fall, and my oldest son had a great comment about him. I'm like, did you watch the game? He's like, yeah. I'm like, what'd you think? He goes, looks to me like every weekend. No matter who they play, Kyron Williams is a guy who just plays harder than everybody else. Yeah, I think there's something to that. And, like, I know that's a very collegiate thing to say and to notice, but, I mean, his effort and energy, I think, are terrific. He's a pro. Yeah. That's where I keep thinking, like, if he's on the board in the fifth round and New England's picking, they're oh going to take yeah. him. Like, he's a New England guy. He seems like he's the kind of, of guy, like, if, if you want to get him 18 or 20 carries a game, that's probably a bit rich right, for him. Right. But as your second back, who's really good in the passing game, can get you really good quality on six or eight carries. Definitely. I mean, this is your guy. No doubt. Six or eight carries, got six or seven catches out of the backfield, it's and he got game. 14 touches in the game, and that's all you needed it for. Yeah. That's what he is. And that, there's a real role for that in the NFL. I would think so, too. Yeah, so uh, to me, we're talking about an NFL running back that's not going to be drafted high, probably not going to be drafted in the top four rounds of the draft. But to like what you're saying – you know, teams that value it and really know how to use that type of guy, yeah. they're going to look at him and go, oh, great, he's here for us. We can take him and go. Played receiver in high school a lot more than running back. I think that shows up it a lot. Does, it with, does with, show with how up. natural he is out there in that part of the game. Yes. Others, uh, Isaiah Spiller comes to mind from Texas a and Definitely. I like Isaiah Spiller. The, Isaiah Spiller, I, I think the only thing that was missing for me was just like the pure power and explosiveness. But like very natural runner. Of course, the size is really good. And like – He's got incredible feet and ability to make people miss. That, that's what I really liked about him. But, you know, at the same time, he's one of those guys where he made somebody miss. Boom. Okay, we're off to the races. The top running backs, I go, oh, they got 25 more yards. And I go, ah, he only got seven or eight more yards, right? There was just a little difference there. But good speed, you know, but just wasn't special. Not as explosive as the top running backs. Good feet and a good ability to make people miss in the open field. But after you miss, he's not going to explode and go for 30 more yards like Walker did. Mm. I, I, that's exactly what I meant. Spiller just not going to, you know, he's just going to get a few more yards. Breaks arm tackles, does all that. But not the kind of power either that I felt like, ooh, it moves the pile or nothing's there and he's still got something. That's not what his game is about. Like him, though. Really did. Remind me of Ch Chubba Hubbard. Oh, yeah. That's who I kind of – From he, Oklahoma State. From Oklahoma State. Yeah. That's kind of who he reminded me of uh, from, from last year. have a, a question from someone thinking about his Jets. This is at Neutrino75. Any late-round backs that would work in a complimentary way with Michael Carter for the Jets? Mm. Yeah, there's there's a few here. And you watch the, the BYU kid at all? I, the BYU kid could be that kind of guy. Yeah. He's a power back. He's the guy you would want to be your complement to a speed jitterbug. Now you got this guy, you're just going, oh, shit, he's running straight, and he's going to try to run us over. Yeah. That's all it's going to be about, for right. sure. So he would be a nice complement. I like Jerome Ford out of uh, Cincinnati a lot, too. Okay. He's a good player. The, um, uh, the other... The which, there's two running backs in um, Baylor, and I'm and I'm blanking on their name here. It's oh the Alden Smith kid. He's another one. Uh, uh, Abram Smith, excuse me, who I I really liked. I mean, another guy that didn't make my top five, but you know was 
that next group down of five guys where I went, shit. I mean, he's he's a player. He can be a starting running back for a team. So he could be that guy because he's not a game breaker, right? He didn't run the court 40 at the combine because mm. he's yeah, he's probably looks like a four six ish, okay. but can kind of break tackles and makes, you know, a lot of six and seven yard runs that there's nothing there. He can make them happen. I'm missing some other guys too. Damn, Kevin Harris at South Carolina wasn't too bad. I mean, he's gonna be getting carries next year in the NFL. It was in a phenomenal class that way. Ty Chandler from North Carolina, something there for him too. Um, so I, I just wanted to Give some love to those guys, and I feel like I'm missing somebody else, but I think we hit it all. Oh, we did say did. Elgar he brought from, up the BYU. From BYU. Yep. We, get, yeah. we we hit on him. Yep. Yeah. So I think I think we hit the ones that at least jumped out the most to me. And uh, you know, like I said, I love my top five, and I love my guy from South Dakota State. I really do, Pierre Strong Jr. I think he's got a chance to be something. I think from sitting here and listening to you talking about the the backs and the draft for the last hour plus, Chris, like. There's the automatic conversation about where do they belong in the first round and all that, the devaluation, all of that. I think I might have created a word. But like now, to me, the, the lead story is how deep this class is. Yeah, It's a fun debate or conversation about where they belong in the draft based off of recent history and where the league is going with the passing game. But, I mean, the fact that there are so many backs that you described as he might be a starting running back in the NFL. I, mean, I know. That's really the lead with this this particular class. I think so. I do. I, I think you're exactly right. You got a lot of guys that are going to contribute to NFL teams, whether it's the starter or they're the compliment back. And you go, the compliment back still gets 10 carries a game for our team. Yeah. Right. And a few catches, too. So, got to have them. Yes. Uh, definitely got to have them. But, yeah, really good group. It really is. As good as I can ever remember as a whole at the position. That's awesome. Yeah. Points bet, first round running back, or the first running back drafted our friends at points bet helping us out here so they see it this way yep. your number two back Brees hall negative 250 as the most likely the way they're viewing this class and they have kenneth walker at plus 175 just behind him so they're clearly the guys that everybody looks at yeah, as the, right? in the top yeah. two right that's it's not even in the no one else is close spiller it, they have is the third one at plus uh, 1200 yeah, yeah wow it's um yeah because these are the only two guys that would be even thought about Right. So let's just start there. They're the only two guys that I think are going to be thought about. Right. And uh, you see my man Damian Pierce there. Right. He's number four. But I think it's those two. And I would I'm going to bet and we can revisit before the draft that this Kenneth Walker Brees Hall conversation starts to become a little bit more yeah. of a thing as we go along yeah. here. It sounds like but before you really studied it, you thought Hall was going to be I the did. guy. I did. But not I mean like you you're not wavering at all now. I'm not at all. I'm like this it is seems one clear I'm, cut to I'm, you. I'm, it does seem clear cut to me. It does. You know, yeah, a clear cut enough to where I want to go, man, everybody that's just been saying Brees Hall was the slam dunk number 1 pick, I want to go did we watch Kenneth Walker's mm. film? I, I just that's where I was a little blown away when I was all done with it just to go man it's just you can't hear anything but Brees Hall Brees Hall Brees Hall and I want to just go well, well, what about the guy that's better than him I, that's, that's <laughs> what about that guy that again so that's that's we'll see but yeah. it'd be interesting to see where that conversation goes and where they do get drafted and it is a good group and that's it I'm glad I'm done with that group because that was never ending all right <laughs> that's for sure and now we'll be on to pass rushers on Ooh, Monday, okay. which is also never ending. Right? Right. So if you're looking for me to have a life anytime in the next three weeks, I'm not <laughs> going not to gonna have happen. one. It's not going to happen. I know you have a long read here for points bet to get you there. You can download the points bet app. Use code NBC2K to sign up. You get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. Yes, that's right. If you're in an eligible state, points bet has an exclusive sign-up offer for unbuttoned listeners that you can't miss. You can't miss it, unbuttoned listeners. <laughs> download the points bet app. Use code NBC2K like Paul said, to sign up and get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. So if you bet $250 and lose, you will get free bets worth $250. That's right. Way to put it together. We got smart <laughs> listeners here. Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with points to bet. Download the freaking app. I like your additions with the emphasis and the words. It just works I'm out well. I'm getting there. That's, yeah. a, that's the best read I've ever done with that. I usually screw that up on the I know last week the, you, you, you weren't happy with it. I was so. not. And I didn't even do that good on Monday with Ahmed. Way to move that in the – oh, M Monday was good? Monday was not. It was not just good. okay. Yeah, two in a just row okay. It can yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. It can happen. It seems like a great deal. It does. That it seems thing. like an amazing deal. There we go. Amazing deal. 
What do we have here? Question sparked by our there running back go. rankings podcast. Would you ever want your favorite team to draft a running back in round one? Only 15% yes. Yeah. I think they all know. They yeah. all see. They all have heard the things that, you know, you talked about to start the podcast and all the second round oh my running gosh, backs. It's crazy. Are, so yeah. there you go. Okay. There it is. There we go. Earliest. Our next question I raised as I was doing the podcast here. 60% say the earliest they want their team to draft a running back is round two. Yeah. Yeah. Round Not even two. Close. We got yeah. a 24.7% for round, round three. three. So, so and thirteen percent yeah. for late round one. There, I, there's some good. There's some good history to say round two is a good idea. I, there definitely is some good history there. There's, so that 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 year that uh, McCaffrey and Fournette went in the top ten. Yeah. Overall, I think uh, I'm, I'm searching for this year. I feel, yeah, I feel like you do. role reversed here. Right, but Camara was in that draft, right? I think there was a Camara. I think that might have been the uh, Chubb and Mixon. I think you're. I think you might be right. Let me so let's so let's see. Chubb so was, was a Saquon, Saquon draft. draft, right? Okay, here right. we go. Uh, the next three, and this is the, the year top ten where we have McCaffrey and Fournette. Next three running backs taken in round two, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Alvin Kamara. Holy shit. I mean, that, it, it's amazing if you just like sit down and be like, okay, I'm going to compare first round backs to second round backs the last five years. And Kareem Hunt was right after that. Jeez. Holy cow. James Conner as well. Gosh. It's just everywhere. It is. Yeah. Uh, it's enough to just go, uh, it ain't worth taking one of them in the top ten. Yeah. It's not. Plus, the amount of money, you know, the investment tied up, something Mike Florio always talks about. Yeah. If they have this, you take a running back in the top ten, and I think yeah. it's a really good point, and they have a good two or three years, you almost have to sign them to the second contract. Yeah. You almost have to. So then you're, oh, shit. We got to pay him this money now. How much does Mike love the draft? Well, well he did. not that much, <laughs> not that much. But like, like Christian Mc, that's what happened with Christian McCaffrey. Just yeah. to say that, I mean, what, you what know, it? good first two for two years. Oh wow, blah blah blah. Year three, pretty good. Oh, hey, we got to pay him. We got to pay him. He's doing great. Mm. But and then you get hurt, and you go, well, shit. Now he's only played like a third of the games over the last two years. Right. You know, that's the other thing that's that's scary about drafting these guys too yeah. high up in the first round. Round two, be ready to hear your name called. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's basically what it is. I, I think that's pretty pretty safe to say. You're right. Um, all right, that's it. We're done. I'm done. I can't talk that's anymore. It? You've had it? I've had, had it. had enough. I can't take looking at you anymore. You had, is, it, is it the devaluation of the running backs or is it me? No, I mean, what's... It, it's, 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 it's actually me. I've talked a lot tired today. of yourself. I've had enough, yes. I don't want to hear myself I can anymore. Understand. Not from listening to you, but like you, you, sometimes you get to a point where you're just like, I, I'm tired of me. I'm out. I'm tired of me. I'm out. We've been going on here this yeah. an hour and 30 minutes. We're you need good. a break from you. Yeah, I need a break from me. I yeah. think the audience does too. I understand that. Don't worry. My <laughs> wife tells me she needs a break from me all the time as well. All right. Peace out. Hit us up. Questions. Come on. We didn't even get to an answer some of the things that people talked yeah. about with yeah. my cornerback rankings on from Monday. We'll try to adjust that. Uh, address that we'll get to that we're saving all these questions peace out have a good rest of your week enjoy the weekend be safe see ya paulie you the see man you soon see ya hi i'm mike tarico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from nbc sports